Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson uh, in learning Kurdish language and it's our uh, 22nd lesson uh, regarding, uh, this lesson is about body parts or anatomy. Well, anatomy is one of my favorite, uh, it's one of my favorite topics, I mean, especially the anatomy sketches. Sadly, I'm not good at, you know, drawing sketches of anatomy, but I, I mean, that was one of the things that I've always wanted to do, even when I was a kid. Uh, well, anyway, I just uh, thought to make a lesson about the body parts and anatomy. Uh, well, if I um, if I left uh, some body parts out, especially inner organs, you can ask me in the comments, and I'm trying to uh, uh, I'm trying to answer you uh, re I mean, regarding the the, the 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 organ that you want to know, like what is it called in Kurdish? Because I I will not talk about. I mean, we don't have an anatomy class, so I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going to talk about every kind of uh, body parts that exist in human body. So, if there is a very specific word you want to know, like appendix or whatever, just uh, write it down in the in the comment. Uh, so, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, we have anatomy. Anatomy in Kurdish we say uh, Well, the the. There is an Arabic word I forgot to write it down, but I, I will not write it because tuakari is, is the Kurdish word for anatomy. There is an Arabic word as well, which is called uh, tashrih. Uh, it means dissection or anatomy. Uh, in Kurdish, again, tuakari means both anatomy and dissection. So, and uh, I want to say this also. I'm sorry, guys, that I don't write in Kurdish Arabic perso script because. It takes a lot of time. Let me say it seriously. Anyway, organ in Kurdish. We we have uh, two. Mainly, we have two two nouns for it. We have andam. Uh, andam actually means member. Okay, andam means member. Uh, but uh, andam, you could be, in a biological context or in medical context, you can say andam, which means organ. So organ. Or you you can say organ just as English. I mean, uh, it's a cognate between Kurdish and English. You can you can say organ. I th well, I don't think we borrowed. It. Probably we 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 borrowed it from English, but this is an, an uh, I mean even in uh, in old Kurdish we, we we've been using this word uh, organ. Uh, organ does not really it 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 does not only mean an organ from body. It, it, in Kurdish, you also can use it in the sense of um, like a branch of an organization. It's also called organ. Uh, for example, a specific political party, it has organs. Uh, you, you also can use it in that sense as well in Kurdish. Um, so, for example, you say organakani, uh, for example, organakani socialism. Or organakani social party socialist, which means, well, I use socialist because you know that I mean you will understand this word in English. But anyway, uh, the organs of socialist party, in other words, the branch of socialist party or the organizations of socialist party. Well, whatever. I mean, you can use, but in the biological context, it means a body. A bo a, an, an organ from your body, like hands, heart, whatever. Body part, uh, body part, andami justa, uh, or andami lasha. Andami justa means the uh, organ, a member of body, or an organ of the body. If you say body parts, if you make it plural, you say andamakani justa. Okay, means body parts. Cell. Oh my God, we have a mistake here. Okay. Cell is Hana. Well, Hana is. Uh, this word has a lot of meanings in Kurdish. In 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 the biological context, in Kurdish, Hana is cell. Okay, Hane Mrov means. Uh, Human cell. Khane ajol means animals cell. Animal cell. Khane ruak means plant cell. 
Uh, but Chana itself, it has a lot of meanings. Um, uh, another meaning is that it, it, it means uh, cell, just like English. Cell can also mean other stuff. Uh, if you use it as a suffix, it can mean place. For example, Nahosh in Kurdish, Nahosh, I think we've talked about it before in adjectives. Nahosh means sick. Okay, someone who's sick is Nahosh. If you say Nahosh Khana, Khana here is a, a suffix, it means hospital. So a place for patient. Okay, another example. For example, in Kurdish we have the word Chahana. Chahana means the place for tea. Okay, the place for tea. Uh, so the place for tea uh, means cafe. Okay, it's a, it's a type of, it's not really cafe, it's a type of a cafe. Anyway, uh, tissue is shana. Well, shana, uh, there is another homophone for this. Uh, it means comb, like comb, okay. But in the biological context, it means, uh, well, shana can also mean, can also mean other stuff. But anyway, in the biological context, it means tissue in the biological discourse, okay. So, uh, Let's come to the face, okay? Uh, face in Kurdish, uh, we have a couple of words. We have damuchal, damuchal means face. And we also have sima, sima also means face. Actually, sima can also be name of people. For example, uh, uh, I have a family member, uh, the, the daughter of my father's cousin, her name is sima. So sima can also be name. Uh, but Sima and Damuchao, both of them means face. I think there are other words as well. It, it, they do not cross my mind at the moment, but there are other words as well. But Damuchao and Sima, we use it a lot. Especially Damuchao, we use it collo uh, colloquially. Especially in Slemani, we, we, we use it a lot. And, and there's another, another funny word. I mean, actually, I heard it in, in Erbil, in Hawleri accent, we have Chocha. Uh, but it can it can be negative. I mean, it means face, uh, but it can be it has ne negative connotation. For example, if I say he has he has face, nothing wrong with this sentence. In, even in Kurdish, it's not nothing wrong with this proposition, right? But if I say, but if I use this word for face, uh, it means he's ugly or he is abnormal so yeah it's a funny word but whatever uh sima we usually use it in writing we actually use both of them in writing but sima is more academic it's more beautiful to be used in writing it's more literary uh but in in in, in a paragraph if you have if you write face two times or three times you better use synonyms okay so you can use both of them so you have head head means ser in kurdish Sar can also be a preposition, uh, but sorry, preposition. It can be preposition as well, depending on the sentence, depending on, it depends on its place in the sentence, its position in the sentence. Face, the or Sima, I've already explained it. Um, well, yeah, I for, I've almost forgot. That's from Penny Dreadful. This character is Frankenstein. Uh, it's actually the creature, the, the creature that, that, uh, that was made by Victor Frankenstein. It's a very famous. It's written by Mary Shelley. I know it was Shelley, but I think it was Mary Shelley. But anyway, it's one of, it's actually one of my favorite narrations because the idea is amazing. It's it, it's about creation versus the creator. And it's a it's a very beautiful one. And that particular scene, the monster is not in my face, but in my soul. I was thought that if I would be like other men, I would be happy and loved. Oh my creator, why did you not make me of steel and stone? Why did you allow me to feel whatever? That's from a movie. Uh, that's from a serial, actually, um, a series called uh, Penny Dreadful. It's three seasons. It's worth watching because they used characters from English literature, like uh, Victor Frankenstein. They use werewolf. Uh, devil, dragon, whatever. I mean, the, the vampire, there are many great references to English literature. Even the name Penny Dreadful, I mean, it's from the Victorian age of 
England, whatever, but it's amazing. I mean, I recommend it for anybody to watch it. So here, I is ciao. If you see eyes, if you make it plural, you say ciao a can. Means eyes or the eyes. But ciao alone means I. Okay. Nose is lut. Lut. Mouth, dumb. But in Hauleri accent, they say do. Okay. But in Slemani accent uh, and in, in the Kurdish standard, the standard Kurdish, we say dumb. Dumb can also means time or period. Um, so it, it also can mean time, but depending on the context. But dumb itself, I mean, if you tell a Kurdish person, what is dumb? They would say, mm, they will point to their mouth. Uh, hair is hair is qaj, qaj, um, qaj, that's j sound, so qaj, that's qa, 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 qa. I think it, it has a global, uh, glottal stop here, so it's qa, 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 qa. It might be difficult for you to say it, but for a non-Kurdish to say it, but qa, qaj, qaj. Then lip, lip is leo. Leo, teeth is dan. So these are dan. How did you people they say the dan? I mean, uh, yeah, the dan. Well, when I was a kid, because I grew, I was born in Slemani, you know, but I I grew up in Erbil, so my family at home we were speaking Slemani accent, and when I went to school, people around me they they, they spoke. How did the accent? I was very confused, and one of the words that I'm really confused about, like, I was like, what? Uh, in my at home, they said Dan. When I went to school, I heard people they said the Dan. So uh, it was for me. It was a bit, you know. I was I remember I was a I was I was a kid, and I was really confused about that. Uh, anyway, ear is uh, gue gue. Gue or Gwechka. Gue or Gwechka. Tongue is Zman. Uh, in some Kurdish dialects, they say Zuban. Even in writing, you can use Zman or Zub and Zuban, both of them. So, yeah, but we usually use Zman. I mean, I usually use Zman. Uh, cheek is Rumat, so it's all cheek. Cheekbone, so this area specifically is Ghana. And by the way, Ghana is named. For example, my mother, my mother's name is Ghana. So Ghana is this. Okay, this area is Ghana. And it's used a lot in, in Kurdish poetry. I mean, it, in describing the beauty of woman, th 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 this word keeps repeating in many poems. So yeah. Chin is Chanaga in Kurdish. Chanaga. Chanaga. And there are some idioms about here, about Chanaga as well in Kurdish. Uh, okay. So let's let's come to the body. Okay, body itself. Uh, let me tell you, this this picture is Vitruvian man. It's one of my it's one of my favorite drawings since I was I don't know since I was a teenager when I, when I first discovered Leonardo da Vinci. I love this picture. Uh, you know, just search about it. It's called Vitruvian man. Amazing, I mean, I, I think it's in, I think it's in the Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci's museum in Florence. I think so, and I really wish one day I go and see it. And by the way, I have the book here. Boom! So I bought this book about Leonardo da Vinci. I bought it just because the cover. Uh, <laughs> well, there was another book about da Vinci, but I bought this one because the cover is my favorite. I love this. I love it. I love this drawing. I don't know, since I was a kid, I mean, it's one of my favorite drawings. Um, I mean, Leonardo must be a genius to draw this. And it has some mathematical ciphers in it. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Anyway, shoulder, shoulder here is Shan, Shan in Kurdish. Neck is Mil. Back of the neck is Pishtamil. 
Uh, yeah, bestimmt. Anyway, chest is sung, sung. Well, it's sung, but in Slemani we pronounce it as sung. Some people say sing, sing. In some in some dialects, not all, but if in Slemani dialect is sung. We write it as S N G, but we read it as sung. So N G at the end is nasal. Arm, okay. Arm, arm is hall. Dust, hand, hand is dust. We have a slide about this. So hold on. I will explain everything here. And then we have uh, finger. Finger. <laughs> finger is panja. Panja. Waist is kamer. Well, kamer is widely used, but you also have another word which is nawqat. Kamer or nawqat, it both mean the same thing. You have tie, ran. Ran is tie. My favorite part of the chicken to eat is tie. Chicken's tie, it's amazing. It's my favorite part to eat. Leg uh, is Catch, leg is catch. Feet is pe. Feet is pe. And it's very close to the French word for feet, which is pie. So it's the same. Anyway, um, dust, hand. So uh, you, we have wrist. Wrist is machek. Let me tell you something funny about Machak, which is, I mean, it went viral in Kurdistan. Uh, the, a couple of years ago, the Kurtsat, uh, which is a Kurdish channel, they dublaged, they dubbed, a, they dubbed a Korean drama. The Korean drama is called The, Legend, the, Le, the Legendary Doctor, Hor Jun, or Hyo Jun. Uh, he was, he's a, a famous doctor in Korea who who had written the book called Dong Bi Bogam. It's a famous book in, in the field of alternative medicine and the traditional medicine. So there is a scene in, in the movie, uh, one of, it's a very funny scene. Uh, a, a guy who accompanied Dr. Hyo Jong to go to, to become a royal doctor, they, mu they must have taken, um, they had to, sorry, they had to take uh, tests and exam, you know, exam, they, they had to participate in royal medical examinations. And somewhere they asked him about the, the wrist, or I think it's a meridian of, uh, of wrist. It's something in acupuncture. And he explained it in a very funny way. And he used the word machak a lot. I don't know if I found a pic, if I found a video, because they shared it a lot. If I, if I found a video, I might put it in the comments. But it's just a funny video. I just let you know it's a it's a tr it, it was a it went viral. Still, people are watching it, and they are. It, it's one of my favorite videos, actually. So, uh, machak. Uh, wrist. Uh, then you have palm. So this is palm. It's called lepidest. But palm reading in English, it's called palm reading. But in Kurdish, we say dest girtnawa. So we said hand, okay, hand reading in a way, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's understand the fingers. So this is Aspekuja, this is the traditional name, Aspekuja. Well, Aspe, I forgot the word in English. There are small things, I think they are called lice, if I'm not wrong, I don't know, I forgot, I've forgotten. Uh, they're, you know, the, the, the small white things on your hair. Um, so in, in Kurdish culture, uh, they killed these by thumbs. So they put the, the lice, I think that's what it's called, between their fingers, one finger, and they did like that. They, they pushed it and forced the, the lice, uh, and they smashed it uh, w w with their thumb. So this thumb is called lice killer so espia means lice killer 
there's another word for it. You can you can say panjagoda. Panjagoda means thumb. Okay, panjagoda means the the big uh, the the big finger. But don't do this in you know in European you know for uh, I uh, I don't remember the, the I don't remember the name of the you know when when you are in somewhere there is a there is actually a, a, a nice name for that. Uh, it was one of my favorite words, but I don't remember. Uh, for example, you are lost or you want to get to the car with somebody else to get you somewhere. You do this, you know, to, 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 to tell the car to stop. But this is actually very bad in Kurdistan. It means fuck you. It, it's equivalent to middle finger. So don't use this. Don't use this gesture in Kurdistan, you know. Well, now people are, I mean, it depends on the context. You also can say for okay, but don't do this to the taxi drivers. It means fuck you. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> some language barrier, uh, body language barrier, no, uh, yeah, body language barrier, no. a sign language barrier, I would say. Anyway, uh, no, it's body language, ah, it's a, anyway, I'm so, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just confused. Anyway, index finger, uh, it's, we call it doshamja. it means the liquor, dosha liquor, dosha, I forgot what it, well, the tomato paste, we say doshawi tamata, means dosha of tomato or tomato paste. It's like a paste liquor, uh, soccer, sorry, sorry, paste sucker, paste sucker. We are getting dirty here. Anyway, uh, there's another name, you can say panji shahada. Well, this is an Islamic way. Shahada, when in Islamic praying, at certain points you do this movement with your finger which you, you basically say that God is only one, etc. At the time you say, la ila, you know, there is no God, only Allah, you do this gesture. But uh, in Kurdish, we now, now we say this is, we say this is the finger of Shahada. But anyway, Dasha Mashe is my favorite. It's more Kurdish and more, f it's funnier, definitely. So middle finger, middle finger in Kurdish, well, the traditional way of saying it is bala barza. Bala barza. Bala barza means bala means the height, height. Barza means high. So it means it has a high, it, 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 a tall, the, the tall finger. You can say this is how you can translate it. Bala barza, and you have panji nawaras. Panji nawaras means middle finger. It's the translation of the English the English word. Ring finger. Uh, we say bright tuta, which basically means the brother of tuta, and the pinky is tuta. So we say tuta and bright tuta. So that's tuta, and that's the brother of tuta. So tuta and bright tuta. Tuta. Okay, uh, let's go to the other one. So we have, um, well, uh, this is my favorite one. Well, I don't say. Let me, let me not say my favorite, but this is one of the paintings that I really like and I really enjoy thinking about it. It's by a Belgian artist, uh, René Magritte. And uh, the, the, this particular painting is called the Son, the Son of Man. I always think about it. I think it has, I mean, it has an apple here. I think it, it is a reference. Um, it, it's a symbol for knowledge in a way. But anyway, I really like this painting. I really like this painting. What about? Okay, so we have brain. Uh, brain in Kurdish is meshk. Okay, meshk. Mind is akl. Akl is mind or awas. I think there are some other names that I, I it does not, they, they do not cross my mind at this moment, but Akl, was I think hizr. Hizr means thoughts, but you also can use it in the sense of mind a time to time. So yeah, a heart is dull. Well, it, you know, this section reminds me of uh, brain body problem of Descartes. Whatever, bone is esik. Uh, there is another word, eskan. Esk or eskan means bone. Uh, stomach, stomach is geda. But we also have this word, which is, this one is an Arabic word. So let me turn to Marida. Marida is stomach. So in colloquial Kurdish, we usually say Marida, but when you write it down, we say Geda. In, in, in Kurdish, 
composition of Kurdish prose, we use Gada. We don't write Maida, so yeah. Uh, liver is Jagat. Jagat. And yeah. Okay, two more slides, two more slides. Uh, here, reproductive system. Well, reproductive system in Kurdish as well. I mean, uh, uh, probably some of you don't like this section because I will talk about penis, testicle, vagina, sperm, and egg in Kurdish. But I think it's very important. And I remember when I learned English, have been I mean, I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I was like, I'm not a kid, I was a teenager. I was searching for, I, I really, I was so curious how, how to say penis in English or testicle or vagina, I really wanted to know. I watched every single lesson and they did not talk about it. Even the pictures, they did not point to this part. And I, I, I've always wondered why. Why the hell they don't let us to know about that, you know? But anyway, I, I will include it in my lesson. I don't want to do the same as other, ling other language teachers. I like to put the... I think it's important, you have to know, it's at some point, you know, so uh, whatever. So penis, the polite way of saying it is chuk. It's the polite way of saying it. Chuk, you, you usually use it, <coughs> you usually use it uh, in, in books. When you write a book about reproductive system or ab about biology, when you mention this word, Penis, now it's a polite way of saying it. You have other words like dick, prick, noodle, uh, <laughs> I don't know, shamlam dubli. You, you have many words in English <laughs> regarding this, right? Uh, in Kurdish, it's similarly, yeah. So penis is a is the scientific word in, in a way for that. So in Kurdish, we say chuk. And dam is nerina, with, with, without this in the parentheses, you say and dam nerina. It means the organ of male. It's a way to say penis. You can see endami zauze nerina. Zauze, it's like here, like the reproductive organ of male. Uh, so th th this is another academic and polite way of saying this word. But in colloquial language, we say ker. Ker, it, we use it a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, ker and gun as well. So these words are not really polite if you use them in a biological, even in a biological context, in a normal context, in a normal discourse, you do not use these words. They are rude. It's really rude. Um, but, uh, I mean, these words are pornographic. You use them in porn pornography. But these words, you use them in a polite way of talking about it or um, in biological discourse. Testicle, we say gun or helka gun. Helka gun is, is, is a more correct way of saying it. But if you see, we also can we also can say chuk. We can use these words, penis and testicle. We can use them interchangeably in Kurdish. But helka gun, no, it's not. You, you cannot change it for penis. You cannot use it for penis anyway. So vagina, the the academic way in academic writing, you can write ze. Uh, it's a polite way of saying it, like chuk. Uh, but zikan, uh, it has the second meaning, which means river. Okay. For example, zeb chuk. Well, zeb chuk can mean the small vagina, but actually it does not mean small vagina in Kurdish. Zeb chuk, it's actually a river in Kurdistan. I think it's in the, it's in the north of Kurdish KRG. So, yeah. But anyway, it, it, it in biological context, it does not mean river, but it means... Um, uh, it means vagina, and I, I actually, I think it, it came from <coughs> it came from Sumerian. In Sumerian, Z means woman. So yeah. Anyway, uh, just like endami zauze meina, we have endami zauze meina. Endami meina means the organ, the the female organ. The female organ is a word to say, but it's a way to say vagina. Or endami zauze meina, or the female reproductive organ. It also means vagina. And that means I was a main. Well, the horrible way of saying it, if you want to make people cringe, the Kurdish people cringe, you say, 
even by saying it, it's a, it's a bit it's a bit harsh to be honest. If you use it. in a colloquial language, we use this, but uh, it's a it's really harsh. It's really really heavy word to use. So kus and or kus, especially in writing, you can write kus, but uh, kus is the is the right way of saying it. Sperm sperm in Kurdish we say sperm or we say to. To can mean to is the translation for seed. Uh, toy piao means uh, toy piao means male's seed or male's sperm. Egg you can say helka helka can mean egg just like English you know that the egg, but helkijen can mean uh, the egg of woman. Then you understand the, the egg is the, you know the, the the that inner organ of that inner. Or, or the cell of woman that you can actually you can use it for reproduction. Anyway, our last slide here, it's just a bonus. You know, I just wanted to include this. You know, I usually include, you know, I, I enjoy making these lessons, these lessons. And it's really enjoyable when I add the things that I like. For example, I've recommended you Penny Dreadful. I've shown you, I have shown you one of my favorite paintings. So, yeah, that's why I, I include these three words. Doctor means pazishik in Kurdish, uh, but you also can say diktor. Diktor, pazishik, you, you, you use it in writing, in writing a, a sign or in Kurdish composition, in Kurdish prose, you write pazishik. But in colloquial way of talking is diktor. When you call the doctor, you, you, you call him as Doctor. Acupuncture, it's one of my favorite words in Kurdish for some reason. Uh, uh, it's called Derzi Ajni. Derzi Ajni. I love this. You know, acupuncture is a pseudoscience. I mean, it's a, it's really a, it's a fake science, it's a pseudoscience. But it's a pseudoscience that I really enjoy, like phrenology. Uh, cupping is Kalashat, it's very common in Kurdistan. That's why I, I've add, I, I put it here so that you know. Cupping is kalashach, and it's a very common in Kurdish. Even my father do. My father does it. My uncles does it. Do it. So um, yeah, I might try it as well one day. Uh, yeah. So though it's a pseudoscience, I don't believe in that, in that shit. But yeah, whatever. So hopefully, uh, I mean, if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. I'm ready to answer you whenever I'm free. So yeah. So have a nice time and see you.